I'd like to introduce you to somebody who you might all know. I might have actually put his picture up already here on the stage. And this is a very good friend of mine, my business partner in a number of businesses, somebody who I have a lot of respect for. We enjoy our holidays together. I sometimes keep my shirt on, as they say. Isn't, isn't that at the back? <laughs> but no, Mr. Bhattacharya, he's a prolific investor. He's been investing since, well, since he just got out of shorts. And today, well, it's summer, and for some reason, we always rock up in a very similar style <laughs> without conferring, which is quite ironic. I think it's summer, and we thought T-shirts weather. But Mr. Bhattacharya, he, he runs the most successful commercial property academy and commercial property mastermind, and it's based upon decades of experience. And for those of you, is there anybody in the room either on the mastermind or done the academy? Raise your hand. Wow. So there's probably 25% of the room. Shout out, useful or not? Useful. Okay, thank you. We're doing summit <laughs> right then. <laughs> I had no idea what was coming at that point, but thank you. We work incredibly hard. When you come to the Baker Street, you get brand new virgin content every single month. When you come to the Commercial Property Mastermind or the Academy, it is brand new virgin content every lecture. There is no, no repeat of content. Everything is keeping you right at the cutting edge of your property game. So for somebody who's going to keep us at the cutting edge of our property game, oops, there we go. And he's going to talk about strategies that will work in a recession. Do you want to know what's going to work? Yes. Sorry? Yes. Do you want to know what's going to work? Yes. Thank you. Can we have a big, well, no, come on, get up, get some energy in the room. Stand up, everybody. Come on, stand up. Can we have a massive round of applause for Mr. Ranjan Bhattacharya? Um, Thank you, guys. Listen, anyone guess what strategy I'm going to bang on about? Uh, anyone want to take a wild guess? Sorry? Oh, a couple of people mentioned commercial to Resi. Have you seen my slides? No, I am going to bang on about that, but I'm going to more importantly bang on about exactly why it's relevant for today. A um, couple of things I just wanted to mention. Um, Andrew's mentioned a couple of our sponsors. We've also got Property Investor News magazine. Uh, who subscribes to Property Investor News? Oh, a few of you. Well, no, uh, Richard, there are plenty more people that probably need to subscribe. Richard, do you want to stand up? Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, this guy is actually the editor of Property Investor News magazine. And, um, and speak to those guys. They've got a stand at the front. They'll kind of help you out and get you subscribed to this uh, journal, which, again, keeps you informed. Um, we've also got some social media influencers that we're working with. Guys, do you want to come up? I know you guys are usually interested in getting likes online. These guys are on Instagram and all of that. They're probably not used to the stage like, so can you just give them a big round of applause? There we are, this, this genuine, real-life thumbs up. Um, uh, Craig, I'm just starting from uh, this, so just tell, uh, tell them, I mean, look, you see, I do a lot of YouTube, you know, which is great if you've got a longer attention span, but these guys give you quick-fire, fantastic tips on reels and all of that, on Instagrams and all of that, so do you just want to share a little bit about what you guys uh, do and your um, Instagram Account so that these guys can follow you. Craig. Yeah. Hi guys, uh, my name's Craig Sullivan, aka The Property Apprentice, and uh, I'm a property developer based in North Kent, and I specialise in student HMOs. I went all in on the student HMO market because my landlord basically um, made me live in a bit of a bit of a bad property, and that's what planted the seed, and uh, I just expanded on that, and um, yeah, I now have an agency as well, so that bolted onto that, and uh, we now manage 72 HMOs in a, in a small Medway town area. How can they follow you guys? Yep. You've got your Insta. Yeah, Instagram, follow, like, Instagram, all that. That, that's, that's my main um, social media platform. Instagram, The Property Apprentice. Hi guys, my name is Alfred Jade. I'm based in the Midlands. I invest in HMOs. I take single unit properties, convert them to multiple units. Usually anywhere between six and eight units. Um, I go through planning most of my deals. Uh, build a portfolio out 
in, in Coventry specifically, uh, City Centre, that's my main focus. I've um, been nominated, well not nominated, well this year I've been nominated for one of the best HMO investors uh, in H this year's HMO Awards 2022. And then also last year, I, was, I won the New Property Investor of the Year 2021 as well. Um, so for me, my main focus is HMOs in the Coventry area. Uh, you can find me on Instagram or YouTube or any of the socials. My name, Alfred Jade, surname is spelled a bit differently, you probably wouldn't guess. D-Z-A-D-E-Y, uh, but you can find me on the socials there. Hi, I'm Kazim Ali Balogan, or Kaz from Property by Kazi, a property investor and developer based in South East London predominantly. Uh, get involved in a lot of different types of projects, but at the moment focusing on residential conversions, um, sort of my bread and butter. In terms of Instagram and YouTube, we're just sort of trying to you know, connect with a younger generation and normalize the conversations around ownership and property wealth, particularly from people from, you know, ethnic backgrounds. Um, Instagrams are property by Kazi, all one word, same as the YouTube. So we'll be, um, uh, basically, you're, you should be all following uh, at Baker Street Property Meet on Instagram. Uh, these guys will all be posting uh, on there and we'll share that so you can just uh, click on their profiles and follow those guys if you miss the spellings. Big round of applause for these uh, <laughs> friends of our meet. Thank you very much. I just want to share a couple of uh, facts, really, about the way the market's going to be for the next couple of years. Um, interest rates are going to rise. But here's the thing. Um, money is still going to be cheap because whatever the interest rate is, is going to be a third of the real inflation rate. Inflation will be running at three times higher than whatever the interest rate is. So what that means is, over time, is if you borrow 100 grand and you have this sustained inflation for a few years, then the value of that 100 grand will feel a lot less in a few years' time. So money is actually quite cheap. The challenge is going to be to do something with it where you generate rental cash flow, which services that debt and gives you a surplus. As long as you can do that over a five-year period, uh, it will be very, very good for you, if that makes sense. Um, inflation's not at the peak yet. Um, it is a little bit of an unofficial tax, uh, because whatever the official rate is, the, the unofficial rate is higher. We just know that. Um, the thing is, it's very difficult for income levels to rise at the same rate as the unofficial inflation rate. So if you're not relying on something, um, some other source of income, then it's likely that your existing income sources will simply not keep pace with the real rate of inflation. So you need to do something. And if you can do something which involves taking debt which over a three or four years period will actually turn out to be quite cheap for the reasons I said earlier. And you can do something which produces cash flow to cover that debt and make you a profit. You will be quid in. Um, recession is coming. I don't exactly know why it's coming. What I mean by that is I don't fully understand why the powers that be seem to want to instigate a recession. Uh, I think the interest rate rises that we're going to see is, is completely the wrong solution for the problem that's out there. Um, the inflationary pressures were not caused um, by the economy being overheated. It's been caused predominantly by a spike in energy prices, which has rippled down the line. But here's the thing with recessions. Recessions affect businesses. Because what's happening now is that people, the cost of living crisis is basically people's essentials have gone up. If your electricity, gas, and your uh, utility bills are going up three times, and your income is not going up three times, then the amount you have to spend on essentials is going up. So you have less to spend on discretionary items. That means that the businesses which uh, basically sell discretionary products and services to consumers will suffer a loss of business. Businesses that suffer like that generally <coughs> occupy properties. And a lot of those properties are commercial properties. Coupled with the ideas that we talked about earlier about how the impending move to um, carbon neutral and sustainable commercial property, because the same thing, we did a video, Andrew and I, on what's happening with EPCs in 2025, the requirement to get to EPC rating C. 
with residential property. A similar thing is happening in the commercial world. And that's going to make a lot of commercial buildings uneconomic to kind of uh, keep up with uh, the modern day standards. So we've got a lot of things coming, which um, basically mean there'll be more supply of commercial property um, than there are commercial users uh, who want to actually take on that, that supply. For the first time in Allsop's commercial auction, uh, the one that just gone, um, I noticed 80 guide price reductions. So when a, and I've always said that an auction is a great barometer of what's happening in the property market. Because what you see happen in the, in the auctions tends to play out in the prop, wider property market a few months later. So normally auction houses test the market by just putting up a guide price. If they don't get enough interest, they have to reduce the guide price ahead of the sale in order to stimulate that demand. Now, as I said, for the first time, I saw about 18 guide price reductions uh, in the Allsop commercial catalogue. So you can see early signs of these trends playing out. But residential prices, um, you know, I mean, Kwasi mentioned a fantastic point, which is in real terms compared to 2008, 2007, 2008, Property, pri property values have not risen. You've got to differentiate between value and price. Price is the sticker price, and that's based on inflation. But value is the, is the real value if, um, uh, if the price is actually kept up with the inflation, if you see what I mean. I don't think, because of the inflation rate, we're going to see a dramatic fall in prices. We'll see some things like new bills and some overextended areas perhaps dip a little bit. But by and large, um, values may fall, but prices certainly won't. And because you're borrowing debt, when you borrow money, um, you're basically uh, not borrowing a value of money, you're borrowing a price of debt. And with inflation, the total value of that debt actually goes down over time. So you end up being quids in. And because of a lot of factors affecting uh, particularly regulatory factors that have come about, and we've talked a lot about this previously, rental prices, residential rents are rising and are likely to continue to do so, and are likely to stay, um, I mean, I don't think they'll keep up with inflation, but they'll certainly uh, not do too bad because of supply and demand. And here's the thing, a lot of residential stock is going to be affected by 2025 because of this EPC requirement, to have, have uh, EPC rating of C, on residential properties. But when you take a commercial building and convert it to residential use, in the process of conversion, doing the upgrade to bring it up to EPCC rating is no big deal. Taking a residential building that already exists is quite a big deal. But when you take a commercial building, convert, you're converting it to residential anyway, doing the extra works is not such a big deal. And the reason it's not such a big deal is because of the price of commercial property compared to residential. Typically, commercial values per square foot are a third or a quarter of residential values per square foot. So thanks to permitted development, which bypasses the need for planning permission, you can actually convert uh, commercial properties into residential use if you pick the right ones and you know where you do, what you're doing and you understand fully the permitted development rules and regulations you can actually get permission easily within 56 days to convert commercial space into residential units. And, um, and that's where the uplift comes from, which allows you to do the conversion, bring it up to speed. Uh, and we, what we find with um, modern converted flats, when they're brought up to a modern standard, they tend to command, well, they always command more rent than a grotty old um, Victorian property, the last time it was done up was in the 2000, early 2000s or something like that. You know? So you tend to get premium rent, rents for these sort of properties because we're already finding tenants are starting to take account. It's only since in the last year tenants are a lot more interested in utility bills than they ever were. Um, they now care a little bit about EPCs and energy ratings and this. The other interesting thing is that vacant commercial property is worth even less than occupied commercial property. And over the next year, with the recession, we're going to see more vacant units. The new permitted development rules, one of the stipulations is, is the commercial property has to be vacant for three months before you can uh, apply for permitted development to convert it to residential. 
And because of the recession, we are going to see more vacant units uh, be on sale. And the thing about commercial property, the way it's valued is different to residential. With a residential property, if I've got a two-bedroom flat in Hampstead, it's worth the same as an occupied two-bedroom flat, and it doesn't matter who the tenant is. My tenant can be um, someone on benefits or they can be a surgeon. The value of that two-bedroom flat is the same. With commercial property, if it's empty, it's worth less. Uh, if it's got a substandard tenant, it's worth a bit more. If it's got a great tenant on a 20-year lease or something, then it's worth a lot more. Um, and that's because commercial property is not valued on a bricks and mortar basis, it's valued on the cash flow it generates. So vacant commercial property is always cheaper. Um, we've just been filming this, uh, the, no, we're not filming, it's been on telly in the last few weeks. I think the final episode of this series was last Thursday. Last Thursday's episode was quite interesting. There were three deals uh, pitched, and all of them were commercial to residentials. It was like a commercial to residential special. If you've missed it or you don't have Sky, propertyelevator.tv, there's a catch-up on demand service. You can watch all the, the back episodes. But um, in series four of Property Elevator, some 25 deals were pitched. Um, and I would say about 60% of them were commercial to residential conversion deals. Because those give you, um, or they're the most investable. They're the least risky because you, you know whether you're going to get the permission to convert it reasonably quickly. They take less time to execute than full planning permission type of deals because you, you get the permitted development in 56 days and because the building already exists and it's an internal conversion, uh, the time to actually do the conversion is less. So you're in and out of a deal in a year. And in times of recession, you want to be in and out of your property deal as quickly as possible. If you want, if you, if you, and you know, time and time on, um, on, on this series of Elevator, you see some people present a deal and they say, hey, this has got a 30% return. Great, but that's over three years. 30% <clears throat> return on a one year in and out deal is a completely different ballgame. Um, so it's about looking at uh, the longer the period to get your return, particularly in a recession, the more risk you're exposure to. Um, Particularly last Thursday's episode is very interesting. Three commercial to residential deals were pitched. It's a good uh, learning ground to see how we all hack through those deals. Um, just a sort of recap of my seven uh, steps to succeeding over the next couple of years. Um, what I found on Property Elevator um, in this season, pretty much anyone who is likable, um, investable, and presented a deal with 30% margin, got funding um, for, for these sort of uh, commercial to residential deals. 30% uh, um, margin is very, very important, and I'll come on to that uh, in a mo. I would make sure that all your development, uh, your figure, you do all your figures based on getting all your uplift out of permitted development alone. Planning permission is a pain in the ass, quite frankly. There's no guarantees, it can go on forever, and particularly if you're using things like bridging finance, um, it, you can really come unstuck and lose a lot of money for each month the deal goes through uh, without getting that permission. With permitted development, 56 days, they'll give it to you. Um, what I do at times like this is I tend to keep the stuff. So you, you buy vacant commercial, you convert it to residential, and the business plan is to keep for long-term rental. Because in a time of recession, what you tend to find, the rental market goes up, selling can be a little bit dicey. If your exit is through selling on the units that you create, then remember, you only make your profit comes from selling the last 20% of units. That's when you've really paid anyone off and got any money. And that can take a little bit of time. But if your exit is renting the things out, uh, and the rental market's good, which it always is at times like this, it's likely to carry on so, uh, your, your kind of quids in. And this is why I like 30% margin. Because if you've got 30% margin in the deal, when you finish it and you want to refinance it onto a long-term commercial mortgage, you can refinance the whole unit on a 70% commercial um, uh, loan and your 30% margin is the equity that you put into the deal. And if you're producing rental cash flow that is more than enough to sustain the debt, and you've fixed the debt for five years or more, 
That is the sh most surefire way of actually profiting from this recession um, and not just um, surviving it, but thriving it and coming up with some good assets. We're going to do a Q&A in the, in the panel. And um, the great thing about doing permitted development, you're in and out of these deals in a year, and you've got a good chance to rinse and repeat this strategy and do it a few times um, before the market changes. Um, we do a lot of education on this. We, we teach this strategy, we show people how to do it. On the back of your badges is the QR code. I'm not going to bang on about it. There are loads of people that have done the course in the room. Um, it's an eight-week commercial academy where we, 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 we basically tell you how to do this, and we have group coaching calls every week to help you implement it and apply it.